Welcome to Office Hours by Triple H Church. I'm your host, Carl Thomas. I'm a pastor, certified neural health coach, and a guy who frankly struggled with a lot of stuff we talk about here for over 20 years until I found freedom around a decade ago. In today's episode, I'm going to be jumping in and answering this question. How can I rebuild trust with my wife when I keep breaking it? That's what I will be discussing today, so make sure you hang in there with me. Recognize that no questions are off the table, and I'm going to be as honest with my answers as I possibly can be, so don't get offended. Without any further delay, let's jump in. Okay, so this question came into our office hours page and realized I trimmed it down a bit because it was pretty long, um, but I, I think I hit all the bullet points. Uh, I struggled with porn and masturbated for six years prior to dating my wife. I've had lots of ups and downs, but was really feeling like I had watched porn and masturbated for the last time, and then today... I was in someone's house and stumbled on a Playboy. I peeked at it for about 15 seconds, then stopped. I feel terrible. I've been improving and getting stronger over time, but I'm also so tired of having this stuff have so much of a pull over me. I'm staying transparent with both my accountability partner and my wife, but now we've, we're having less intimacy than ever before. We're making progress, but I feel so stuck. I keep breaking her trust so it's not helping with healing, and she doesn't want to go to a counselor because of a bad experience with one prior. How can we rebuild trust when I keep breaking it? How can she heal from the hurt she feels? How can I help her move forward but not force her? How do I make it a year of how do I make it to a year of freedom when the longest I have gone is six months? It's lessening, but I'm feeling so defeated. It's like I can never escape. It's everywhere, and it's so fast when it happens, it's almost a blur. All right, sir. Well, uh, thank you for the submission. And I will tell you that in many ways I've heard this question from a lot of people in in one form or another, especially in uh, some of the communities we host, like the Live Free community. Uh, Very common, right? Uh, This is something I've been struggling with all my life. I have ups, I have downs, but I seem to always come back to the same place. I'm married and, uh, you know, the the inconsistencies in my behavior and my choices creates like this ripple effect in my marriage, which affects the intimacy. And my wife and I have a really hard time moving forward because she can't trust me. Like, you know, that's kind of that's kind of the common story. Right. And I get it. Um, First thing is understand that in your description about the ups and the downs and all the different things you tried and how you've had periods of sobriety. But then you go back. That tells me that what you're experiencing or what you've experienced during those good times is what we would call white knuckled sobriety. So in other words, a lot of willpower, uh, a lot of, you know, escape mechanisms or uh, tactics that you use or employ to just kind of get a hot water for the moment, right? But it's all basically very willpower oriented, very behavior modification oriented. And white knuckling always leads to relapse, okay? There's no other way around it. Because when you're only dealing with the behavior, when you're only focusing on the behavior, you're not dealing with the stuff you really need to deal with, which is why the heck do you go to this stuff in the first place? And uh, we talk about that a lot here. I'm not gonna go into all of that, but I would just tell you, that ultimately it comes down to mental wellness and the fact that um, you have a hard time integrating what you believe and value with what you choose to do. And there's a lot of scientific reasons for that. And it's stuff that you need to work through and you need to get help for. And, uh, you know, a lot of times counseling is needed. Uh, I would definitely tell you that plugging into a support group is very, very helpful, if not necessary. Um, smallgroupsonline.com is, is a website we, we offer for that type of thing. Or at the very least, plug it into a support community like the Live Free community. Um, that also is very helpful. We, we host these different resources and communities because we know that people need connection to grow, to feel healthier and safer, and to allow their brain to function in the way it was meant to function. When we are alone, when we are isolated, when we're just trying to handle this thing by ourselves, and we're only focusing on the behavior we end up just going back to the same old well all the time. So if you want long-term freedom, you got to do more than focus on the behavior, right? Now, in terms of the intimacy issue with your wife, yes, makes a lot of sense. Of course, it's going to be hard to establish or build any real meaningful intimacy with your wife when there's constant betrayal going on. And that's how she views it. It's betrayal, right? You say something and then you do something else. And it's sexual betrayal on top of that, which is really painful. Uh, how do, how do you deal with that? Well, first of all, she yes, she needs to get her own healing. She should probably go see her own counselor. If she doesn't want to, you can't force her. You can't own that, right? You can only recommend it. Uh, we, have an org- we have a website called Live Free, livefreewives.org she could go to. That's very low key, but it's a community. It's a support community just for spouses. That could be very helpful for her. Um, a lot of good resources in there, in there, so I would recommend she check that out. 
Uh, but again, you can't control any of that. You can only recommend it. What she chooses to do is what she chooses to do. The only thing you could do is work on you. And so that means doing the work of recovery. And I mean work. So again, counseling, going to a group, uh, maybe taking a course, reading some books, learning about what you're dealing with, more meetings with your accountability partner to talk through the stuff you're going through. All this stuff is what you need to do. And uh, that's going to go a long way with your wife because a, a spouse does not want to just hear, I'm going to do, I'm going to try harder next time because they know that that means nothing. They, they've seen it over and over again and it never leaves anywhere or never leads anywhere good. They want to see that you actually are going to do something different, right? I'm not going to just try harder. I'm actually going to try something that's better, and this is what I'm doing, and I'm committing to the work of doing it, and I'm gonna stay accountable to you in terms of my efforts, right? And throughout this process, I'm also gonna be honest about where I am on my recovery journey. And that's gonna help a lot. And you'll build intimacy as she starts to see that when you say something, you do it, and you're, you're making an effort, and then she starts to feel a little safer with you. And as, she, as you build that safety, uh, or that feeling of safety in your relationship, the intimacy will start to also increase. Um, last month, uh, by the time this airs, probably, I guess it'll be last month, sp spent a whole month talking about this very thing. So I would go to triplexchurch.com, check out the blogs from uh, April, uh, look for the Matt, Matthew Rabsmith blogs. They're all about building intimacy. There's also links to their new book or his new book, which is awesome about this very subject. So check all that out. I think that would be very good for you and your wife. Um, that's about all I got right now. So if you have a question for me and you want me to answer it in an upcoming Office Hours episode, go to triplexchurch.com forward slash office dash hours, submit your question there, and I will answer. That's about it. Have a great week.